Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music, and in this video we're taking a look at a program called Audacity, which will allow you to take a WAV file, insert it into Audacity, and use it to either rehearse songs or change the pitch or change the key even, or to slow them down in terms of learning how to play a song that you're trying to learn an intricate passage or you're trying to figure out what notes are happening. Audacity can help with that. Now today I'll be demonstrating it on Windows because on the previous video that I recently did for Capo 3, that's a Mac only product and it does some of the same thing. So I figured we'd do something for Windows users to be able to take advantage of if you don't have a Macintosh or an iOS device. So with that in mind, Audacity is different than Capo. It's not necessarily purpose built for musicians, but it does a lot of the same things. And I thought it would be a likely substitute since I've used it in the past, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do first here on my Macintosh is I'm going to open up iTunes and actually grab a song that I want to learn or rehearse. Uh, so in this case, I'll just do that right now. Now keep in mind, iTunes runs on Windows or Mac. So I assume that however you're going to get the sound or the music, whether it be an MP3 that you ripped earlier from, from your own music or you're using iTunes, either way, you need to start with a song. So in this case, we'll start with, uh, let's say, Take the Long Way Home. I'll drag that to my desktop here, right out of iTunes, and I'll quit out of iTunes right now. There's my song. And what I'd like to do is load this song on Windows and then do the rest of the demonstration from there. Let me load up a Windows instance here, which I happen to have on AWS, uh, which is Amazon Web Services. So it's my Windows machine in the cloud, if you will. And what I'll do is I'll just load this PC and grab the file from my desktop here uh, on my Macintosh. Here it is, 7 take the long way home dot m four a that's the format that is sort of the default format when you drag a sound out of iTunes it will be in that format but that format won't necessarily be able to be opened within audacity so the easiest way to do this I think is to convert it to a WAV file uh, prior to loading it to audacity all right so here's my song it managed to get to Windows here now I've got another website and I'll put the description down below and this website is called, I guess, Zamzar, and essentially it's created to uh, convert files from M4A, the iTunes format, to a WAV file in this case. So I'll click here and add files, and I'll grab the uh, particular file that we want to talk about, which is Take the Long Way Home. We'll grab that and insert that into this website here. It allows you to choose a WAV format, but notice you can even go to MP3 or MP4 or some of these other interesting formats depending on what the needs are and I've done that so I will click convert I guess I have to agree to the terms uh, and an email when I'm done I don't really want to give them the email so hopefully they will let me uh, convert this and have the file right here available for download which is pretty darn cool now I haven't read the, all the ins and outs of this website or any of that stuff so um, you know you want to do that and use this uh, you know at your own discretion but it's just something I found, it looked easy. So now that's converted and ready to be downloaded. So let me download this so I have a WAV file to work with and I'll just um, I'll save as and save it to my desktop, I think is what I really want to do. And it's got the same name, just the dot .wav. So I'll click save, here we go, and voila. I now have the song in the format that Audacity can understand. So now we actually have to go get Audacity. So let's go do that. Uh, open up a browser and just put in a search term audacity a u d a c i t y and you will likely find it as the number one search uh, you'll know you're there if you see the headphones with the music uh, sound waves here between the headphones that's audacity uh, it's asking me if i'm a human or a robot so it wants me to find traffic lights so i'll do that now i don't think that's a traffic light that's a street light here we go didn't like that so let me do bus has the world changed or what? Seems like everywhere you look, there's some form of security to make sure that we're all being good citizens. All right. Now, this is the site for Audacity. This is open source uh, software. It does run on Macintosh and Windows, so and Linux for that matter. Uh, and it's all right here. It's pretty well supported. It's been around forever. I've been using it over, off and on for years. It seems like north of 20 years. I haven't used the latest version, but let's go ahead and download that now and install it here on Windows. So I'll click here. Now it'll bring you to sort of an open source e type uh, environment now where it's starting to get where you have to do a little reading. It's got uh, an installer that uses, uh, that includes an exe file, that includes the 
manual and one without a manual, it looks like. So I'll do the one without the manual, at least get me to this area. Then here you are in the famous open source type environment. If you've never downloaded open source software, this may look a little confusing, but essentially it's giving you all the different uh, platforms. So you'll have to pick the correct platform. In this case, I'm going to choose the Audacity Windows installer. And, you know, don't be fooled. They're always throwing these additional download buttons that look like you're about to download it. So you click on that, and you end up getting a whole other piece of software that you didn't want to get. But this is just the nature of how these repositories work when it comes to open source software. All right, so let me download this Windows installer here. I do really like this green arrow that they throw at you, telling you, hey, this is where it is. Let's take a look. All right, I think it's done. So I'll open this now and click Run. And we'll install Audacity here on my Windows machine. I'm just following the wizard screen, kind of blowing through these windows one after another. I had already installed it earlier, so saying that, uh, you know, I had a folder created, but that's fine. This shouldn't take long at all, depending on how fast your computer is. All right. And we'll launch it here at the end. It tells me here that there's quick help, a manual, a forum, if I want to really get into this. Now, this is a pretty sophisticated piece of software, and it's meant for, you know, audio engineering, if you will, or audio creation or audio enhancement, audio editing. You name it, it can probably do it when it comes to audio. It even has multi-track capability and things like that. But it's not necessarily created for just musicians. I think it's, it's created as much for sound designers and multimedia people. I mean, it's got a, a universal uh, capability. And to really show you every button here, would take a whole course. Uh, so we won't do that. We'll just go over the basics and just let's get this file into Audacity and start to see some of the basics of what we can do. So I will look for this WAV file here on the desktop and I simply will drag it into this area. It's asking me, you know, it's telling, give me a warning here when importing uncompressed audio files. You can copy them to the project or read them directly from the current location without copying, etc., etc. I will move the copy of the files before editing safer. It's the default and I'll push OK and voila. Here is a stereo uh, depiction of my sound, the left and right channel. And if I were to look at this and let me put some headphones on here so I can hear it. If I play a little bit of this, you're going to hear a long way home or take the long way home from Supertramp. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this by clicking and dragging. I've got the whole song selected, both tracks. And I'm going to now uh, go to this effects area here. And you can see here, I can change the tempo. It says change tempo without changing pitch. And that's really important because you don't necessarily want to change the pitch. So you can do it as a percentage here, or you can do it as a beats per minute, assuming that it has determined the beats per minute, which it seems like it may be implied that it has done that. I can change the overall length, which will also shorten or increase that. So if I wanted to change the length to something shorter, let's go 50% slower. Or 58% rather. And it's going to apply that change here. And then we should be able to hear this at extremely slow speed. Let me play more exciting part of the music here. Okay, not exactly fun to listen to, but very handy if you're trying to learn the chords of the song and want to play along, or you're trying to, you know, depict some really intricate passages, things like that. So that's the speed. And again, I just selected that and went to effect and then went to change. I guess it was change tempo. Let's load up another song here in Audacity. This time we'll pick a Chick Corea tune. This one's called Gotta Match. It has a really fast intro and a very fast head to the song. So it goes something like this. And then it heads into the head like this. So let's slow that down. And we'll pick, I guess, from the beginning to about here. And let's just see what this sounds like if we were to slow it down. So I'll go to Effect, Change Tempo. It's originally 1921, so we'll lengthen this a little bit. Go down to 30%, so we'll play it at 70%. Here we go.
Now I notice there's a little bit of distortion as it's playing it at that slow speed, and there seems to be less distortion when it comes to programs like Capo 3, but it does get the job done. Now let's listen to this melody here. Now, short of reading music or looking at the transcription of this, uh, this is a great way to learn these fast passages so that you can pick out the notes and rehearse. Okay, now let's head back to the Supertramp song. There's other interesting things you can do here that I haven't played with too much, but you can do some noise reduction. That's interesting. You can uh, add other effects like echo, distortion, not that you'd want to do that. And I think the other thing that you might be interested in is change pitch. If you remember from the other video, the capo video, we could change the pitch. Now it says here, uh, change it from, you know, B. So let's see if I went B to B flat, what would happen then? Applying changing pitch. Okay, now let me undo that and just listen to the difference. So this will get you started and uh, give you the opportunity to experiment and reach out and branch out and figure out different things and how you can use your computer to help you as a musician either rehearse songs or really dissect them uh, and this just gets you started this is just the introduction to all of this stuff but thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one